Hello everyone and welcome to another video. In my opinion, Phylobatus vitatus is one of the most underrated dart frog species out there. In fact, it's my personal favorite species in my collection. In this video, I'm going to talk about the pros and the cons with them and give you a care guide. I'm not going to cover everything about dart frog care, like how to set up a bioactive vivarium or what lighting to use, but rather focus on the more species specific things to help you choose what type of dart frog you want for your vivarium. Let me know if you want to see more videos like this, as I have a few other species that I could cover as well. Phylobetes vitalis are a medium-sized dart frog from Costa Rica. It's a really beautiful species with vivid orange-red stripes on their backs, and their behavior is also very interesting to watch. They're very easy to care for, making them a great beginner frog in my opinion. One of my favorite things about them is their call. You can hear it very clearly, and it sounds very pleasant. Like other dart frogs, they only call during the day, so no need to worry about having to stay awake at night. I keep a group of 5 Phylobetes vitalis in this well-planted exoterra, and they seem to be thriving. It's 90 by 45 by 90 centimeters, or 36 by 18 by 36 inches. I should also have a disclaimer that yes, I do keep them together with my Renetme Amazonica French Guiana Yellow. No, I'm not encouraging mixing species unless you really know what you're doing, mainly because of risk for hybrids, territorial behavior and competition for food. However, these species can't hybridize, N neither of them are territorial and the vivarium is large and they occupy different areas of the vivarium, meaning that they barely ever meet and there's way less competition for space and food. I've not noticed any issues during the two years I've kept them together, but I have empty enclosures in case I would have to separate them for some reason in the future. Anyway, back to the topic of today's video. Phylobetes are some of the dart frogs that can be kept in large groups with almost no territorial behavior regardless of the sex ratio. Unlike, for instance, the Dendrobetes cinctorius, which are often territorial against same-sex individuals. I currently keep 5 Vitalis in here, and I believe it's 2 males and 3 females. That said, frogs are individuals, so always keep an eye out for aggression just in case. I have read that females can sometimes eat each other's eggs, but I've never actually experienced that myself. They are quote-unquote terrestrial, so horizontal space is definitely more important than vertical space. However, if you give them a tall enclosure, they will likely climb a bit too, but if you're choosing between a tall or a wide vivarium, I would pick the wide one. Mine are usually underground, but I sometimes find them in the upper half of the vivarium laying eggs in the bromeliads. When it comes to size, I think all of the 10 gallons per frog rules, etc. are kinda dumb because it depends so much on the species, its behavior, how well the space is used, and if it's horizontal or vertical. It's hard to say an exact min minimum size, but I would not go for something smaller than roughly 45 by 45 by 45 centimeters, or 18 by 18 by 18 inches for a pair, or something a bit wider for a group of maybe 4 to 6 adults. Sure, you might be able to keep them in something smaller, but I really don't want to risk overpopulating my vivariums. And if you want to know what's the bare, bare, bare minimum size for a dog frog, ask someone else than me. As far as food goes, Vitalis are not different from any other dart frogs. I pretty much only feed mine flatless fruit flies, but there's always a bunch of isopods and springtails in the substrate that they can hunt as well. Always powder the fr fruit flies in a good vitamin supplement. I have a few brands that I vary between, but most consider Repashi Calcium Plus to be the best. Phylobetes are some of the easiest dart frogs to breed for a few reasons. My group started breeding when they were about a year old, a bit older, and they just never stopped laying eggs since then. Once they get going, there is simply no stopping them, and sometimes I find 30 plus eggs each week, and to be clear, no, I don't raise all of them. They're not picky about egg laying sites, both film canisters and coconut huts with petri dishes underneath will work, otherwise they can also lay their eggs on leaves and in bromeliads. This isn't going to be a complete care guide for taking care of eggs and tadpoles, that's a topic for another time, but I should definitely mention that the best part about breeding phylobetes species specifically is that the tadpoles can be raised communally. 
The tadpoles of other species can often be cannibalistic unless they're kept in very large bins, but phyllobates can be raised together with ease even in smaller water volumes. You can even mix different sizes to some extent. Maybe not a freshly hatched one together with one that's about to leave the water, but you can still mix to some extent. The most common question I get asked about my Vitatis is actually how bold they are. They have a reputation for being quite shy, but they aren't as shy as many people say. For the first year that I had mine, they hid a lot, and at one point I almost started regretting my choice of species since I just never saw them. However, once they got older and got used to me, that actually changed. Of course, they're still not like... That's one of my dog frogs. Of course, they're still not like think tourists that just sit there without giving a shit about anything whatsoever. But I can still always see a few of them, and they're very easy to brag with food, as you can see in the video. If I accidentally wave my hand or move very quickly outside of Ivarium, they usually jump away. But if you give them some fruit flies, they'll usually come out again in no time. Since you can keep them in large groups, you can pretty much always spot a few of them. If you have shy frogs, a tip is to be around the enclosure more, especially around feeding time. I think this is the main thing that changed aside from them growing up, from when they were very shy to when they were out all the time. Just standing there, watching for a few minutes after feeding makes a lot of difference. Eventually they will learn that you're not dangerous. This results in way bolder frogs than if you keep them in a corner of the room where you're never around so they can just jump away the few times you are. This might not work for all species of frogs, but at least for my hungry Vitalis it certainly did. There's also a pretty good chance your frogs will be more comfortable being out in the open in a well-planted vivarium where they can really feel secure. The more hiding places you give, the more you will see the frogs in the long run. That said, even though they can be quite bold, if you're setting up a vivarium for a kid or maybe you just don't want to bother with the risk of please stop, maybe you just don't want to bother with the risk of getting shy frogs, then I would maybe look into getting some kind of Dendrobates cinctorius, Dendrobates leucomelas or Phyllobates terribilis, because those ones are pretty much always out and there's not much of a risk with them. So, to summarize, is Phyllobates vitatus the right frog for you? They have a loud, but still very pleasant call. It's actually not them calling in the background, that's my Epipidobates anthonii. The Vitalis have a slightly quieter call, but not that big of a difference. Anyways, back to the summary. They are mainly terrestrial, so if you have a very tall, not very wide enclosure, maybe not the frog you want to go for. They can be kept in big groups without any issues. And they are fantastic in big, well-planted enclosures, because that's when you will probably see them the most. They can be a bit shy when young, but they usually become bolder with age. Especially if, as I said, you're around the enclosure a lot. So, that's going to be it for today's video. Do you agree with everything I said, or do you have another experience of keeping Phyllobates vitalis? What do you think is the most underrated dart frog species in the hobby? Feel free to let me know in the comments, or maybe even make your own video about it. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more. And you can also follow me on my Instagram at gecko underscore geek06. Thanks for watching.